been post RK cataracts. Arbans, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is it there? Yes, yes. Yes. Go ahead. So I put the next session at 12 o'clock. So we have a half an hour buffer between the two. Oh, wonderful. That's good. So consider it. Thank you. So we know that how the RK used to work. We used to give a paracentral incision, which becomes is cheaper and the central flattening used to take place. The problem is it keeps on happening throughout the period of the patient's life. So the challenges are basically pre-operative, operative, post-operative and lessons learned. So the biggest problem is the pre-operative. That means what is the keratometry, what is the biometry and how to counsel these patients. So maximum flattening is in the center while we measure the paracentral area with all the equipments. And optical biometers, sometimes these corners are so flat that the optical biometers may not be able to measure it at all. Uh, there may be ectasia with a very high keratometric values, which if you do not pay attention may cause a lot of error. So once you are taking the uh, measurements on the pentacam and optical biometer, put it into the IUL cal ASCRS.R and use the Barrett, it gives you Barrett minimum average maximum. So use the maximum IUL power you get to decide which IUL to use. And whether to use the toric IUL or not, that will depend upon the quality of data. Agreement between the pentacan optical biometer and most important is the refraction of the patient is very, very critical whenever the cornea is developed. <laughs> and particularly if the cataract usually is not dense and what a spectacle patient has been using. Up to 15 degree of disagreement between the various instrument is acceptable. But if it is more than that, it becomes very, very difficult to decide. The, I'll not go much into detail of the operative because the uh, operative is completely much more simpler to do the surgery. But post-operatively, you need to look into the transient corneal edema. That means if your patients are hypopic by 3-4 adapter, don't get worried. And keep on examining these patients every two weeks. Keep on doing their corneal thickness measurement to see whether the cornea is becoming less edematous and whether is the hypermetropia is going down or not. Only if after... Uh, two to three weeks, there is no change. You should think about that it is a permanent hypropia. And myopic shift of four to five diopter in two to three months' time is very much possible. So do not get panicked if you get patient is immediately post operatively hypropic. So I will now present one of some of the lessons what I have learned uh, over a period of time. This was a 51 year old male with prior history of RK 15 years back, had cataract in both eyes, best character visual equity was 612. And his subjective refraction was minus 4, minus 3.5 at uh, 170 degree with 612 vision. So if you see the, uh, the IUL master, the keratometric values are 37.49 optical biometer is giving, power which is coming 13.5 and the cylinder is very much in agreement with the axis of the refraction. But if you see on a pentacam, the biometric value was 39. So the, when we put for a target refraction of zero, what we are getting was 11.73, minimum was 11.73, maximum was 13.56, which is matching with the lenses, are not with the pentacam, because lenses are reading is giving much more flatter than your pentacam reading. So you need to pick up, it is not always that the pentacam will give you more accurate catrometric value. So whatever flattest you're getting on any equipment, you have got to take that into the consideration. And then, if you see the toric IUL, there is excellent agreement of the volume and access on the various equipment. So this patient is ideally suited for the toric IUL. And I always target minus one in all these patients, never target zero, because whatever you take, the center is much more flatter than any reading you are getting. So in this patient, we went with the 15 adapter IUL and had an excellent outcome. So this is the another case. And the if you see over here, the estimate was 6.25 diopter and the average K was 36.6 and 33.75, 63 and 172 degree. And when we did it onto the pentacam, the axis was 149.3. So there was a huge disagreement between the axis of the lens star and the pentacam. And once we calculated the target refraction one, the IUL power was coming 29 while the lens star reading was 21. So you have got to go with the minus one and the maximum reading you are getting. And then 
what toric iol and what axis you should use so the pentacam and iol master had 149 and 172 huge difference between the two but if you see the refractive error of the patient it is 164 8.25 over here so this means that patient would be quite happy and comfortable at 165 so whenever if you can get a refraction so refraction in irregular cornea and rk patient is much more important than the access what you get on a pentacam and biometer so this is we used with a very good result so if you go just by the lens star you would have landed up into high hyperopia this is the another patient a prior 32 incision rk and if you see the optical biometry is 37.5 and 46.8 zero and 41.62 and the power we were getting was 10.5 so huge uh, if you see this reading 46.80 that means you are seeing at a area of ectasia and once we did the iol cal calculation the power we was getting average was 9.79 maximum was 11.52 we planned for 12.5 with the toricity correction and the post op patient had three weeks post op his undilated ar was 13. Point, plus 13.5 and plus 1.5 and the acceptance was plus 9 and plus 4.5 you can see the how much hyperopic the patient was because we missed and measured the keratometry of the ectatic area instead of the flat area which was 46.5 so then uh, the the now we if you see that whenever there is a refractive error normally a basic principle when we are uh, doing the earlier iol when the biometers were not available we used to use 20.5 21 diopter the iol which used to correct the 10 diopter of the aphakic correction so that means the relationship is around 1.5 when there is a hypermetropic error so if you see this the lens used was 12.5 so 11.25 was the spherical equivalent multiplied by 1.5 it is 17 17 plus 12 patient needs around 29 diopter or so. So the, if you want to have a residual refractive error of minus one, then patient needs 1.5 addition around 31 diopter. So anyway, I could not dare to do put the 31. I place exchange the lens and place 27 diopter, and his spherical equivalent was now 0.5. And once we put on a scleral contact lens. he could see with minus 4.5 of 6 by 7.5 so in spite of using 27 diopter while the uh, biometer was telling us around 10 diopter still patient was slightly on the hypopic side so use the flattest reading get you are getting on the any equipment and you have to have under uh, minus 1 so one there was a iol power collection done in one of the patient where the iol power was coming between plus 2 and minus 6 so we planned for the secondary iol so we were not sure what lens to put in this patient post op refraction was plus 13 we went and implanted 26 diopter of the lens over there so lessons learned is that take the flattest scattermetric value use the iol calc ss dot r target refraction of minus 0.5 to minus 2 diopter any keratometric value above 40 diopter it may be paracentral any biometric value below 18 diopter cross check the k values until unless the refraction is myopic it should be on to the range of 26 28 diopter most of these patients need the iol which is between 24 to 28 diopter because most of them will have 3 to 4 diopter of hyperopic shape so if any value is coming less until unless there are only four incision six is in the patient is still myopic you can go ahead and use it so i i just thank you for giving me this opportunity And if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Harbans. Wonderful.